Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Puan Aida Azlan Pak Tita My student Mutaka from Nigeria who is doing his PhD It is gentlemen Thank you for the invitation to speak in sharpened words A sharpened word Singular not plural. <laughs> uh, I I know where to start. Uh, perhaps I'll give you two two uh, things which uh, is related to what I do. Uh, one is uh, a little bit about writing. Second is uh, what I've been doing for the last uh, 30, 40 years. Uh, writing as, as such. Writing is not just uh, Skill. Writing is a tool, it is uh, uh, theory, it is practice, uh, it is technology, it is aesthetics. And there are many genres to writing. It's, uh, it's creative or it can be non-creative in, in one sense. If you look at the continuum of writing, uh, you have the uh, factual fiction uh, matrix. On the one hand, you have facts, the other hand, you have fiction. I'm looking at writing in terms of uh, uh, prose, in terms of uh, uh, mainly non-fiction essay. Uh, I started with, with, uh, with journalism. Uh, I started with uh, when I was uh, an undergraduate in the School of Journalism in the ITM in 1978 uh, when uh, I was exposed to uh, non-fiction writing although we studied novels and literature uh, in-house not only helps but it is integral to if one were to uh, be proficient in, in uh, uh, non-fiction writing so non-fiction writing is 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 uh, factual, it can be factual, and we talk about factual here, it can be in the form of uh, the news genre, yeah, as, as uh, was mentioned. Uh, one dimension that uh, is important for us is uh, in journalism, and to be a good journalist, one has to be a good storyteller. So when we talk about writing, we talk about storytelling, being a good storyteller, even if we one is an academic, not academician, academic, the proper name. Uh, academician uh, would be people who are members of uh, learned societies, uh, Academy of Science, they're called Academician, but those who work in universities, who teach universities, are called academics. So even for, for academics, for, for scholars and professors, uh, one has to go beyond uh, writing for the technical paper, writing for the journal paper, writing for research reports. One has to go uh, and transcend that technicality into a form of storytelling. That's what happened to many, many uh, uh, scholars uh, all over the world, uh, especially in the United States and Europe. Uh, after a certain, certain phase in their academic life, uh, they began to tell stories. They began to, uh, some of them write poetry, some of them write uh, columns, and it is a tradition of uh, uh, academics in, the, in, in, in Europe especially, and also in, in, in America, to write columns uh, for the newspapers. So when, 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 when they write, uh, they go beyond the footnote, they go beyond the jargon, uh, but they still maintain that uh, the, 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 the piece of writing is, is, is scholarly informed writing. It's not just uh, writing uh, uh, in a popular manner. Eh? It's scholarly informed. Not everybody can write what they've written. And this is why I'm telling myself uh, to you. I'm telling to you what I do uh, over the last uh, perhaps uh, 30 years where I extend myself beyond the classroom. So when you talk about writing here, it's uh, is it to impress or to express? It's both. I sometimes write well, to impress sometimes to express and there are certain audience when we write we must imagine a group of people who would respond or who would read it's not writing against a blank piece of work 
of, 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 of canvas. It's where you identify who you're writing to. So uh, in, in writing, uh, uh, in, in the factual fiction continuum, um, you have the news. Uh, in the news, where you read the news every day, either in hard copy newspapers or in online, it's, uh, uh, they will answer questions like what, where, who, uh, and, and when. What, where, who, and when. These are hard facts, so-called hard facts. Any news would answer, for example, news covering an accident, what happened, who was involved, when, when would be uh, within the conceivable uh, time or clock time, and where within a conceivable geographical space or, or place. Uh, space and place is not a virtual, uh, or a, a virtual place or space, but it's geographical space or place. And uh, in news, you have several kinds of news. You have hard news, you have straight news, you have uh, uh, developing news. Uh, for example, the uh, assassination of this uh, uh, North Korean guy, it's developing every day over the last few days. Uh, you can find different stories that's developing news, but the what, where, when, and who was answered, perhaps uh, early on in the first story, breaking of the story. Uh, I was a journalist before I became an academic, so I, uh, I was practicing that hard news uh, genre, uh, which I don't like. Uh, I, I do not like writing news. I was writing news for, for two and a half years for Banana in the early 80s, 81 to 83, but that's the most uh, averse thing that I was doing. I prefer to be a critique of journalism and a critique of news rather than the writer of news. But anyway, uh, because news does not allow for creativity in the conventional sense of the word. You have to write within a certain formula. Okay? Uh, so there are many genres of news. And uh, next to news will be features. Again, within that news paradigm. Features would be, you write, uh, okay, another, another, another uh, uh, criteria for news is novelty and timeliness. Uh, you have to, cover uh, things on time, when it happened, not 10 days after that or one year after that, uh, and then publish it. Uh, and now we're online, so it's a 24-hour kind of uh, generation of news uh, by all news agencies and by all news uh, uh, production houses. Uh, early on, it wasn't 24 hours, it was uh, about 30 years back, it was beating the, the uh, uh, news bulletin in RTM. So when we cover news uh, in Padama in the morning, we have to meet that one thirty news bulletin at the end, for example. So that was the deadline. Okay? It's not a 24-hour deadline. Uh, but I don't like doing what I was doing. Uh, so uh, but anyway, uh, then you have features. Features will be more of a human interest kind of uh, genre. Uh, still sticking to the five W's. Uh, what, uh, what, where, when, uh, how. I'm leaving out the Y, okay? WHY. Features are more people oriented, quite timely, uh, of uh, human values, uh, human interests, what people do. For example, uh, they will cover uh, foreign students in Malaysia when they were spending their Ramadan, uh, festivities, uh, different festivities. Uh, these stories would add color uh, to people's lives. Uh, but they're still confined to uh, uh, that particular genre where the writer of the feature cannot be in the story. Same with the writer of the news. You, you cannot be in the story. You are detached. Uh, uh, there must be some, some objective value to it. It's impersonal. So the news is impersonal to the writer, the feature is impersonal to the writer. And then uh, you have the interpretative story, uh, whereby the writer interprets uh, news events and gives some assessment. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in some uh, newspapers, or uh, there could be some uh, uh, implications as to the why and the how of things happening, the ramifications of certain events. Uh, for example, I was, uh, you know, early on, you have this, uh, even now, the five Malaysia plan, five-year Malaysia plan, and, uh, and there was this midterm plan, now you have the national transformation, you have all 
plans. So the news would be on the announcement of, of those plans, but uh, after some years, after some time, uh, you have uh, stories evaluating the effectiveness of those plans. So we have to talk to uh, policy makers, implementers, uh, we have to talk to people who benefit from those uh, policies, for example. So that's interpretation. All that is within the news genre and the writer is intact. So the writer cannot be part of that uh, genre. Then comes the leader. The leader is the beginning of the opinion genre. Op uh, you, when you open the hard copy newspapers, uh, Star don't have a leader, Straits Time does have a few other papers where it represents the opinion of the newspaper, whether the hard copy or online. Again, uh, the leader uh, would be quite impersonal. Some uh, would be uh, quite personal in a sense. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in, in the star, you have the star says. And sometimes the leader would use the first person. Occasionally, the star would have the leader. But then the more important or the more significant one, perhaps for many of you, would be uh, genre uh, in terms of commentary, uh, opinions and essays and that's where I come in. Uh, I come in as uh, a columnist uh, or uh, 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 a, commentator, uh, 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 a commentator for ideas and events and uh, in, in, in my uh, uh, engagement with the newspapers uh, I write columns for the Straits Times uh, and Sunday Times. I have, uh, 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 in the Sunday Times, uh, early on from 2003, I was writing for the Learning Curve. Last, uh, Learning Curve, early on, it was uh, occasional uh, uh, contributor. But beginning with 2010, I was writing on a regular basis. Uh, in the last Sunday of every month, my article will appear in the uh, Learning Curve. Uh, I would write about uh, intellectual life in Malaysia, universities. Uh, I would like to uh, write about uh, uh, history, uh, how we consume and conceive history. Uh, I would like to uh, write, write about uh, certain ideas on the, on higher education, on the UC economy, and so on. So that was going on, and uh, that uh, 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 continues until now when the learning curve has been dismantled uh, a few months back and uh, but the same education, higher education column has been transferred into this page on Wednesday. Every Wednesday you have higher education. My, uh, my article will be on the last Wednesday of the month which, we, which means next week. Uh, and next week you'll find uh, my article which is titled The Footnotes. My fascination for footnotes. Yeah? Uh, there will be hundreds of footnotes in, in, in my work, you find uh, in, in, in my, some of my books. Uh, and uh, the publisher of one of my books told me that uh, you know, I have to reduce the number of footnotes and so on. And uh, recently I met uh, 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 a fellow uh, a panelist who we always meet in on panels and the forums, and he would criticize me. Uh, as a scholar, I always would write and use footnotes. I cannot write. Uh, uh, an essay, you know? So that column this Wednesday would respond to him uh, that scholars also write uh, non-fiction essays and also do not use footnotes because to many scholars or rather to many academics in many universities they would have to cite things when they write uh, a journal article and when they write a report uh, they would have to cite uh, whether it's text or some footnotes to justify or to prove whatever they've written. But there are many uh, writings, many great works of scholarship that do not use footnotes. So this is another, another, another genre of writing that, that uh, we have to be uh, appreciative of. Many scholars in the world, uh, writing to the papers, uh, writing books, uh, do not use footnotes at all because they are the authority and when they write, they write in a tone and manner in which uh, they articulate views and express uh, difficult ideas and concepts for the layman. And that's one of the functions which I do, apart from teaching, uh, research uh, and publication, 
I fulfill the fourth function of an academic in a university, which is public advocacy. One of the things which I do in public advocacy is to write for the mass media. And writing for the mass media is not just writing anything, it's writing with authority on the things that I write. Uh, now, coming back to the uh, uh, my books, I have uh, coming, this uh, latest will be my 11th book, I think. Uh, my recent book, uh, 2015, was uh, titled Batu Uban, Sejarah Awal Pulau Pedang in Malay. Uh, and uh, uh, it was thought to be an academic book. But when people read that book, people know that I was writing about a narrative. I, I used narrative and I was writing about another narrative on the polemics of the history of Penang and the polemics and the politics of heritage in Penang. Uh, now, I want to relate to you two books. Uh, which I have written. Uh, one is this book, my first book ever, 2001. Uh, this book, uh, this was uh, conceived in 1986 when I came back from the States uh, and I had this manuscript already. Conceived to be a, a, a non-fiction essay. Although it's on journalism, but it's not on the skills of journalism, it's about the sociology and the history of journalism. So when I panel my manuscript, okay, the problem here is that between 1986 and 1998, maybe about 10 years or so, I was panelling the manuscript for this book. I went to five publishers. The first publisher that I went to uh, said that I don't have a PhD and at that time and uh, I'm not an associate professor. So they said that we don't publish books uh, from those who do not have PhDs and who are not associate professors. So uh, sadly, I, you know, uh, I felt disappointed uh, that they don't publish. I mean, they look at titles. I don't care about titles. I mean, I have titles, but I don't, I don't care about it in a sense. A PhD is publication here, a data sheet is people who want me, but you can call me anything. Uh, a profession is ranked. It can be a generic, also can be ranked. So that was the first publisher I went to. And then I went to also known publishers. That was the quite an unknown publisher. But I went to several known publishers. They were quite condescending on the title for the book and the, the manuscript. Some of them said, oh, we don't publish books on, on the skills. I said, no, this is not on skills. This is on, about the spine. This is about the writer itself. This is about the problems of writing, the problems of journalistic expression, the problems of journalism in times of crisis. This is about the semantics of journalism. But they don't believe me. And uh, another publisher gave me a marketing form. I filled out. Uh, these are major local and international publishers. Uh, after that, uh, they came back to me, no, we can't, we can't publish your uh, Because my idea was that I, I want uh, a book about journalism in Malaysia in English that do not talk about skills, do not talk about how to write news, do not talk about how to write news features and uh, uh, the various functions of journalism. It's about the story of journalism uh, in the world against certain, uh, certain global conditions. Uh, because I was oriented by uh, a number of literature published in the 70s and 80s about journalism that has to be exposed to, that has to be written. And people don't know. Uh, for example, people will always attack the messenger, kill the messenger. Uh, even now, uh, they burn newspapers, they kill the messenger, but it's not the messenger's fault. It's the fault of the powers that be, it's the fault of the readers or the audience. The messenger, of course, it doesn't mean that the messenger is innocent. The messenger can be equally guilty, and the messenger can take various forms. Yeah, this is uh, the, the thing which I was arguing. Finally, in 1998, one uh, kind uh, friend uh, offered to publish. So he published this book, uh, and this uh, I gave uh, a photo of uh, Reuters, uh, 1932 photo of Reuters uh, covering the war in Ethiopia. So this is a Reuters uh, journalist, uh, and these are the Ethiopians, and he was using a typewriter. So this is based on, on the photo. And uh, inside there were uh, also uh, uh, some 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 uh, illustrations, uh, and uh, 
it became my first book. I intend to publish it or republish it uh, with another publisher uh, soon. And uh, I will design the concept. Maybe retitle it. Uh, another one uh, is the, uh, which I hope will be in the market next month. Uh, I have my, my photo as the cover. Uh, it's titled in other words. Uh, essays, uh, ideas, not essays, but ideas on the journalism, social science, and society. It's uh, uh, to reintroduce the discourse on journalism. There is no discourse on journalism. In other words, there is no discussion on journalism that we can be proud of or that, that, that is quite uh, 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 pompous. Uh, the beginnings of such discourse in journalism began uh, in 1998 99. Uh, with the setting of Anand Prahit, and then uh, you know, it, 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 at the time uh, they emerged two media systems. Then only at the time uh, uh, these papers or journalists talk about themselves, uh, or, on, on expression, on uh, press freedom, on regulation. I was part of the proposal to set up a, a media council in Malaysia in 2001. At the time, it was a response to uh, to uh, uh, press prisons uh, against different parties and how press seem to be unregulated. So we thought of uh, we coming up with a mechanism for self-regulation. Not regulation, but self-regulation. But journalists are they're quite contented with being what they are in Malaysia. And uh, AG at the time uh, took the proposal and said that the uh, Human, Human Rights Commission are doing the same thing. But the Human Rights Commission are only taking complaints. One of the functions of the press council, uh, regulatory function of the press is to receive complaints. So, but then uh, the AG doesn't know that that uh, the, the press council or sub is beyond uh, the function of complaint. So I'm quite disappointed. It's not the present AG, it's the previous AG, 2002. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, that was the the, the, uh, the, the problem uh, with journey. So my 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 book uh, uh, intends to continue uh, this discourse, giving different ideas about journalism, uh, about redefining and reconceptualizing journalism, saying that journalism is not newspapers, not only news, it's uh, a whole philosophy actually. It's uh, about uh, a landscape where people express and, and people tell stories about, about oneself and, and uh, about, about society. And people talk now about peace journalism. I, I, I've been going to, to, uh, to Tehran uh, next month uh, talking about journalism and peace. It's not peace journalism. Peace journalism is a concept here. Yeah? Uh, it's quite an uh, incomplete uh, theory. In fact, we're talking about journalism and peace because there is also journalism and war. And much of the war that we have seen in this world has been induced by journalism, especially the Vietnam War and the Iran War and how they have uh, made it so So my book is a selection of uh, uh, maybe about 200, uh, 250 columns uh, which I've written over the last, uh, since 2003. Uh, and from then, uh, I've chosen about 25 articles uh, that has a, a theme on, on, on journalism and on writing. Okay. Uh, because I do not separate journalism from writing. I've included uh, uh, a few journalists who be become writers. And, and uh, also, I've included uh, Mahathir Muhammad, whether you like him or not. Uh, he was a journalist. He was a writer from 1946. Uh, he has about, I think, 60 years of experience of writing. He, I mean, he is a person who has a life in writing. Many people do not appreciate his writing and they think that it's only the Malay dilemma. No, he was writing in the Swiss time, uh, Sunday Times, sorry, from 1946. And uh, I've analyzed all his writings. And from there, he's written about uh, maybe 20 books. He himself wrote the book. I asked him whether he has ghost writers or whatever. He said no. Uh, and I also got access to his handwriting on the, some of his speeches. So uh, again, uh, uh, he has used writing of Mahathir Muhammad. I have uh, written an article, I have organized a seminar. He has used writing to project his, his ideology uh, uh, to the world. Uh, uh, and he has been quite successful in doing that. So essentially, I have included uh, those, those people, and, and, and the book hopefully will be, uh, as I've said, uh, literally is a press now. Uh, I hope that it comes out before the uh, book fair. Thank you.